Rangers and welcome to Ranger Ruby YouTube channel. In today's video, I'll be going over how the National Park Service is handling COVID-19. Let's go ahead and dive right on in. Okay, now, so as you may or probably don't remember, way back in April, I already made a video about this. But as you may and actually probably do know, April feels like an eternity ago and so much has changed since then. For one thing, the national parks are now open again. So I thought instead of researching a video and see how in broad terms the national park is handling it, I'd go through each of the national parks that I visited on my trip and tell you my own personal experience because as I was visiting these parks, I realized there's a shocking amount of difference between how each of the services and how each of the states are handling COVID-19. Let's go ahead and check them out. Okay, now, so as you've seen from my vlogs, link in the card, the trip started out at Golden Spike National Historic Site. And this site set a pretty good standard. Like all national parks, every single US government building, there's a mask mandate inside, which makes plenty of sense. The visitor center was not open, though you could still go in and explore the park and see the trains, and there were park rangers there. Now this is one thing that I'm just gonna use to give you guys a little reference as to how they're handling it, is whether or not they allow you to get passport stamps. So at Golden Spike, you literally could walk up, there's a little stand and you could do it yourself, do it at your own risk. You could like wipe it down, do whatever you wanted to it. The stand was there for you to get the stamping book and the gift shop was open. Now, this is a very common thread that you'll notice in some of the parks, is that the visitor center was closed, but the gift shop was open, which you might think doesn't make very much, much sense, you know, since like, aren't they the same thing? But actually the gift shop slash bookstores normally are run by different companies or businesses and not necessarily by the National Park Service. So they are allowed to open back up. The next site is a doozy, and that'd be Yellowstone National Park. Now, Yellowstone National Park handled it for the most part pretty well and pretty similarly to Golden Spike. Um, but there's one big difference. Um, that is when you go inside the park, a ranger gives you your brochures, everything, masks inside, of course. But when you go to the visitor centers, there are rangers there so you can talk to them but they have like two long tables so you still remain socially distant and they have like a pointing stick so they can point you at different things on the map and different things that they have taped on the table for you to see um at yellowstone you could not get anything stamped you had to they would have these little stacks of paper that you could pick up and take home and tape them in your binder or your national park passport and the gift shops they were all open too. So for the most part, it was pretty much the same, which makes sense, but it also doesn't really, because later as you'll find out that I think the reason there's so many differences is by state, but Utah and Wyoming are different states. So I don't know, but that's just how Yellowstone handled it, which for the most part was okay. It was a little disappointing that we couldn't go into the visitor centers, but other than that, everything was open. Now the next park, nothing was open. At the Battle of Little Bighorn, literally no visitor centers. There wasn't even a place to get your stamp. They had like a couple of sheets of paper taped to the door. There was a ranger at the entrance, like counting the cars. It was free. I don't even know why he was there. There was literally nothing to do. The only thing that you could go into was the bathroom, which we did. But other than that, they had some audio tours of the park and they had some other things, but it was a little bit less interesting to do because literally all you could do was walk around and read the signs and there wasn't you couldn't even pick up a brochure there's no place to do that so the battle of little bighorn that was pretty much it was a little bit more disappointing but we weren't gonna stay there long for much longer anyways but yeah the next park would be devil's tower and that one handled things pretty much exactly the same except the gift shop wasn't even open um, but you could get a stamp there, which is so weird. You, they had a little stamping station. You could do it yourself. You could get a stamp. The gift shop was closed. You could pick up a brochure. There were park rangers there, but the ranger station was closed. It was, it was kind of weird. And this is what's so crazy to me. It's that it's not all standardized across the National Park Service. 
The next place we visited on our trip was Mount Rushmore. So this might be by the fact that we went there on a Sunday, but the park museum and the park gift store, those were all open. The museum had closed by the time we'd gotten there, but the park gift shop slash bookstore, that was open. We could go inside, look around that. Um, there weren't there weren't any actual rangers there. There were just people working at the bookstore and the visitor center wasn't open. But other than that, it was pretty much the same. And unlike the other parks where if they didn't have a stamping place where you could get your book stamped, you had to like take a little piece of paper with it pre-stamped. There wasn't even that at Mount Rushmore. And I don't know if it's just because just they ran out when we got there or what, but there were no, I didn't even see any spot where I could get my book stamped. So that was one thing. But for the most part, Mount Rushmore doesn't seem like it needs to be a place where, although the museum would be cool to go into, the actual park, it's right there. It's very simple, very user-friendly. So that was pretty good. And then the next five parks, all in the Southern area of Utah, they were all pretty much the same. And I was actually kind of stunned by this. All of the national parks, stamping place was open. All of the national parks, the gift shops were open. And for the most part, at all the parks, the visitor center wasn't open. The, the visitor center was in the same building as the gift shop. So there were actually park rangers there and you could kind of talk to them. But again, masks inside, gift shop was open, visitor center was not, which I feel like is a very common thing that you'll see throughout the parks. And that's pretty standardized. And for the most part, all of the parks were very good even without the visitor center and without the museums and without all that open. All in all, the visit was amazing. And as long as you wear masks and remain socially distanced, the National Park Service makes it super easy for you. Most places had audio tours and signs that were very helpful. And although it would have been nice to have some ranger tours or some museums or to watch the park movie or to be able to complete the junior ranger booklets, all of that just didn't work out because of COVID-19. So for the most part, if you're thinking about visiting a national park during the pandemic, for one, try and stay away from people and wear your masks. But other than that, it was a pretty good experience and it didn't feel that different from other national park sites that I visited, except for like going to the museum, which again, you can get the most gist of the park even without that. It's just a very helpful resource. Well, everybody, that's the end in today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please be sure to give this video a huge thumbs up and comment down below with your thoughts. I'd love to hear from you. Also, be sure to click that red subscribe button and a little bell next to it to always know when I post new videos. Thank you so much for watching again, and I shall see you next video. Bye!